welcome to part one of the guitar pick tray series where our goal is to create a guitar pick tray we can sit on our desk keep all of our guitar picks in one place so they don't disappear on us and part one what we're going to do is go over the model of the guitar pick tray and then go over how we assemble our fixed jaw vise and our model together to get ready for our tool paths in later videos we will go over how to create soft jaws for op 2 and then we'll go over the individual tool paths in fusion 360 and show those tool paths being performed on my tormach 770 just keep in mind if you're using a different machine your speeds and feeds will vary so now let's jump into the details you notice i have three models on the left one of the pick tray one of my fixed jaw vise and one of the soft jaw vise now I plan to make these models available for free through Fusion 360 so you'll be able to use the link in the description go grab the models and then follow along with the video tutorials okay so let's jump into our pick tray model we will open up the sketch and you'll notice what I'm providing to you is simply the outline of a guitar and then an offset to create the sidewalls. So all that we need to do now from the sketch to create our model is simply two extrusions. So this will be a nice simple model, especially if you're new to CNC machining, it'll be a nice first part for you to make, nice and simple. So we're going to press E for extrude, and we're going to extrude the floor by a quarter of an inch, which is rather thick, but I'll explain why I'm making a quarter of an inch in a minute. We're going to go back into the sketch and now we're going to extrude our sidewall. So we're going to press E again. And we're going to go 0.7 of an inch. There we go. And we're going to drag the little bar at the bottom of our screen to the right so that we can see our model in its entirety. There it is. So what I want to do now is explain to you why I made the floor so thick. So when we flip our part over and we perform OP2, my fear is that if the floor is too thin, it could vibrate and cause chatter, which would really degrade the surface finish. This is a nice flat surface. We want, we want it to be shiny and beautiful so we can show off to our friends and family. The other scenario I'm worried about is if the floor is too thin, we can imagine the scrunching or the crushing of a pop can. When we put force on the part with our vise, it could deform on us. If that were to happen, we could run into a couple bad scenarios. One, we could end up cutting more material than we think we should, which could break our end mill. Two, because the part's deforming, we could actually lose clamping pressure, and then our machine could throw our part out of the vise, which could damage our enclosure, or it could physically injure us. So we wanna make sure that the floor is thick enough so we think that our model is going to be stable in our vise. All right, so now moving on, we'll go back to the home view just so you can see our model again. Now what we're going to do is click the plus sign in the upper right hand corner. That's going to bring up a new file. We are going to hit control S for save. And now we are going to create a file called the assembly and we will bring our fixed jaw vise and our pick tray into our assembly and prep for op one. So I'm gonna go back to the model of the guitar and make sure I save control S. So that way when we drag it into our assembly, it will be updated. So now I'm gonna start by dragging our fixed jaw vise into our assembly. I'm gonna hit enter. Now we'll go over a couple of things here. Number one is you'll notice I'm not using parallels. In my preference, I like using step jaws. I just find them to be faster in my workflow so I don't have to worry about fixed jaws and parallels. I just have one set of step jaws with an eighth inch step. Again, it just allows me to move between fixed jaws and soft jaws faster. Next, you'll notice the parametric stock here in orange, and this is key. You always want a master model of your fixture with a parametric stock, especially if you're using a vise, because what you want to be able to do is on the fly dynamically resize the stock such that this fixture will be able to be used on multiple parts down the road. You created it once, 
you don't want to have to create it every time for every part. So you have this one master model of your fixture and you can on the fly size the stock accordingly for whichever part you're making that day. So now I'll go ahead and right click and go to break link. And what we'll do now is go to modify and go to change parameters. And I broke the link so that I can change the parameters. Linking would actually point us back to the original model, which we don't want. We want to be able to size it to our stock here in the assembly. So I'll go to change parameters. And now you're going to see the beauty of this in a second. For this model, what we need our stock to be is six inches in length. So if I hit enter six, you'll notice that our stock dynamically changed. And now we need it to be four inches wide. And so you'll now, now notice our stock increased in width and our jaws followed it. So our fixture is perfect for what we need it to be. And the height of our stock is an inch and a quarter, which is perfect. Okay. So now we have our stock, our parametric stock and our vice ready. All we need to do is drag in our model. And what I'm going to do is rotate our model 90 degrees. And then I'm going to bring it up and out of the way. All right. And now it's just a matter of jointing our model to our parametric stock. So I'm going to orbit so I can see this nice flat surface. I'm going to press J for joint. I'm going to click on the center of our model and then I'm going to join it to the center of our parametric stock. Now we're not done yet. We need to bring it down in Z such that our model is below the surface of our stock. Now we know the width or sorry, the height of our walls was 0.7 of an inch. So we're going to go down a little more than that. So I'm going to go 0.75. So that's 50 thousandths below the top of the surface. And I'm going to tell you why that's important. So we want to be below the surface of our stock because our stock is going to have imperfections on the surface. All right. There could be scratch, dings, dents, etc. And we want to have, we want our model to be below that. So we're comfortable in removing enough material to get rid of those surface imperfections and that our stock will be nice and parallel to our machine for the rest of our operations. And so in my preference, or in my opinion, 50 thousandths is good enough if it is a nice piece of bar stock. So that's what we did. We went 50 thousandths below the top. So now we're going to click save, control S for save. We're going to go back to our home view here. And now we're going to get our setup ready for op one. So we're going to go to design and then we're going to go to the manufacturing tab. And now what we need to do is just right click on setups and go to new setup. Now you'll notice there is this ugly piece of stock. To get rid of that ugly piece of stock, we're going to go to the stock tab. And instead of relative size box, we're going to go to from solid. We're then going to navigate to our parametric stock. So we're going to go to models and we're going to expand till we find our parametric stock. Okay, now Fusion has sized our stock accordingly. Next thing we want to do is go to the Setup tab. And now we're going to tell Fusion 360 where our model is. Our model is the pick tray. So we're going to click on the pick tray. Next, we are going to select our fixture. And we're going to choose the individual components of the vise. Now that we have the individual components of our vice selected, we will go ahead and we will select our probe point. So we will click on box point and then we will select an edge on the fixed side jaw. So I am using the upper left corner, which is on the fixed jaw side. And why we want to do that is because our fixed jaw is stationary. It's not going to move it's going to provide the most reliability in terms of locating our stock and our part. <clears throat> so now we are finished. I will just go ahead and mention here that by selecting, by enabling the fixture, 
and selecting the parts of our vise, we are allowing Fusion 360 when we do simulation to know where our vice is. So if we were to do something stupid and we were to hit our vice, the simulation would warn us so that we don't actually do that and ruin our vice or ruin our machine when we're performing our cam operations. So now I will go ahead and click OK. So that is the setup the setup for op one. So in the later videos, we will go ahead and go through the tool pass for op one. Thank you for tuning in and I'll see you again.